be two or three or four people a month. But I thought I just might as well take this opportunity to uh, talk about today, or tonight rather. Um, so I'll, be, I'll, I'll give you a short presentation at the beginning about XS, specifically to actually the skin. And then following me, uh, there will be a 10 minutes break, and then Professor Puebla from Oakland University uh, give his presentation, uh, his, his lecture, event, and then after you can relax a bit. It's going to be really informal tonight, as you can tell by the chairs. And then, um, and then Professor Puebla is going to spin a bit, and then he's going to have some more drinks and just talk about what uh, everything was. So, but before I start, I think Haruka wanted to say a few things. But also, she just left? No, she's turning the lights off. Oh, here. Uh, she's behind <laughs> the curtains. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, I think everyone knows Haruka, so I'm just going to have a mic. Oh. So, just to uh, give a small announcement. Uh, yeah, a small announcement. Uh, I don't know if you Smoking is prohibited in each bar bus and also on the terrace or on the street. So please find a smoking area. It's on the signal, signal corner. Really far from here, but please go to there. Also, also the drinks? Yeah, the drinks and the, the yeah. Yeah, drinks also during the presentation. You have to pay for them, but it's, it's and then also there's the bathroom around the corner over here. here. And also downstairs yeah. for previous floors. It's actually gone much realized it's the first day of lectures at night. It's about us at workshop. It's kind of weird. So, but anyways. Um, also, a little announcement about tomorrow. Um, the Pink Ponies and Arna Hendrix are, we're supposed to give a small presentation tomorrow, but we were thinking about actually uh, postponing for now. So, I think you already heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, cool. No, but because... Can we have it? <laughs> no, but anyway, so it's, uh, that's, that's that. So, anybody... But we'll, we'll, we'll post up online as well, so for everyone information, etc. So, don't worry about it too much. Okay, um, then I'm going to start. Sorry, what yeah. happened here from the web? Um, okay. I think, I think, I think just until uh, later on in the week, or... You will, you will be informed. You will be informed. Thank you. Yes. yes. So, okay. Um, that's the with all the practicalities. And so I'm going to start. So, my presentation is called Excess scratch the surface. And before I start, I actually have to give a small disclaimer. So I know starting with disclaimer is uh, perhaps not in such a good form, but reflecting on the presentation earlier, um, it, I realized it could be interpreted as quite harsh at times. Um, it's not meant to be harsh, but it's meant to just kind of give everyone a really clear idea of what some of the problems could be. Because this is a workshop and people are supposed to kind of confront the city. And so there are a lot of, yeah, there are, there are a decent amount of pitfalls. So we're just going to blast people's minds uh, a little bit and then that's what this presentation is about. So, excess scratching the skin. And I'm going to play you the video. <laughs> to what is already kind of 
floating around there. So Tokyoids are not all zombies, and if they are, they are as complex as you or me. So when we think of Japan and especially Tokyo, we think of too many. Too many lights, too many sounds, and too many people. It's an onslaught on our sensitivities. So this is the fifth <laughs> Tokyo is extreme, a proverbial city of excess. But let us consider it as not outside of the norm, but simply different. They are not us, and he is not you. This is a clip from Enter the Void, but just to kind of talk about showing this kind of image of excess that presents it. Example from McLaren uh, for biking to Sangin Jaya, 
it's a neighborhood in South, I think most of you guys know it, but it's a neighborhood south uh, of Shimkitazawa. We got lost summers between our destination and Shibuya. The map was of little help, so we asked someone, knowing Sangin Jaya is close to Shimo. And, but then he explained, I work in Shibuya, and I live in Shimokitazawa. And I know it's close to here, but I have no idea where it is. It was interesting to see that he truly was one that lived in his own little village, inside the city. In fact, everyone here is a tourist, in one way or another, in navigating to Tokyo. So, often when I speak to people about Japan, or life in Tokyo, what comes up are all the freaky bits about mass suicides, the number of people that jump in front of trains, or how lonely the city is. We've all seen Lost in Translation. Every big city is lonely. If you're traveling on a commuter train from Jersey to Manhattan, nobody's really very excited. But there is something about Tokyo, but it is under the skin. You've got to scratch at it a little bit. So excess. As a way to quickly complicate the act of comparison of things, of things people often see as excess. Here are two examples. Professor Uno Toshida, 
I was struck by the extremity of light in Tokyo. And as research was looking at the manifestation of excess, or excess in material culture. First, I was looking at excess framed by this term violence in the public domain and mass culture. But quickly it became clear that excess that I thought I saw in the public domain was in fact an offshoot of the excess within the private domain or on a micro scale. My research was focused not only on Tokyo, but on Tokyo post bubble, and even most, more specifically, taking the Tokyo certain gas tax or subway siren incident and the Shonen A incident. Um, I use those as my beginning points for my research, kind of like uh, in terms of time. Uh, just a quick explanation. Uh, Tokyo Saturn incident, I think everyone knows about it. 19, 1995, five coordinated attacks were made on the Tokyo Metro, killing 13 people and, and injuring some thousand. Uh, the attacks were organized by the organization. Were organized by the organization. It kind of sounds like a Dutch uh, uh, a government letter, but. Uh, uh, the organization, Om Shinkyo, so it's kind of a cult. Uh, they had these really weird ideas about, it's actually kind of related to the still city in some way. It's kind of, I think, at a certain point I read that um, the leaders thought that there's still too many people. And so, yeah, or it's also kind of, they want to kind of quicken up uh, the apocalypse so they can put the leader into, as an emperor. But yeah, it didn't really work out. Um, the second one, yeah, so this was actually the first major terrorist attack in Japan since the end of World War II. And that's also, this incident was a significant traumatic marker of repositioning the social construction of post bubble and, and however, on a more macro scale. And at the end of, 19, oh, at the end of May 1997, Kobe cut off head of the special education student was found in front of the school gate before other pupils got to school. Uh, I'll spare you the gory details as they are not important. I'm not showing you photos because it's, yeah, it's kind of unsettling. Um, uh, yeah. So this incident, as having been a high profile case, can also be seen as a social traumatic marker, however hinting at the domestic micro scale. The details of this case convinced me to investigate further the domestic and the individual excess in the everyday. It became a lot more uh, apparent that excess wasn't necessarily about larger and the formations, but really about the individual or the household. Beyond the gory mutilations of the case, which could have easily led to the interpretation of the case as another example of the general extreme, extremist Japan, the details of the crime and the coldness of the crime led me to think that excess could only be effectively used when looking at individual cases. Okay. So, And one cannot compare the everyday of the Japanese, rather there is no Japanese, only individuals and in their personal relations with the environment. This applies to all nationalities. Only here it seems to be easier to make the comparison between us and the people here. It's kind of the um, Because of the strong emphasis on a social, uh, the individual is hidden behind a series of screens, so to speak. It's not really possible to explain my entire research now, which I'm not going to do because I've got like six boxes in them. Uh, and perhaps not even appropriate, but to add to the idea that comparison should try to elicit something from deeper underneath, I want to say something quickly about one of my observations on Japanese horror cinema, which is also incorporated in my research. So,
私とあなたはいつか必ず巡り合うそう思っていました
that's why a lot of people in general are, are Japanese and are feel the need to create these narratives or these actions or these actions. Um, I can't really speak for any for, for them, but I, for my, just as observations for me, I guess the only thing I can really say is that there's a lot of things hidden. And that's just how, for me, that's always how I've understood the, the whole construction here. It's like, I think it feels brought up at a certain point. The, the home is always going to shut off from the outside world. It's building the, not really home, but it's these types of buildings becoming a little more popular. But that's, that's something new. Um, before, everything inside of the home unit was totally shut off, from my understanding. And so, what happens in there kind of goes to a certain degree um, into, into the mind, I guess. But that's just what I would think. There's also a difference between too much and excess. Though the excess is like extremely too much. No, I, I don't, I don't or I mean, that's why I, I think it's interesting you say it's about nuance. So it's a kind of like a, a sliding scale, but somehow, of course, in our kind of common conversations, excess in, is on the far end of the sliding scale of some from normal to the to the yeah. periphery, so to speak. No, yes, I think that's also kind of that's, that's that's right in terms of just how we use it locally as well. But it's kind of, for me, it, it's, it's a very fine line. It's like, well, well, when, when would you say that it's, it's kind of acceptable surplus and it's acceptable that it's a bit out of the normal? You know I mean? So, you know, it's kind of like, from what I've understood about my social behavior environment, uh, it's kind of, you have to kind of fit within a certain thing. And if you don't fit within that, then you're a bit too much. Yeah. But that's also a bit too excessive, or it's good. Yeah, but because you research it, uh, especially like individually, no, as kind of an individual uh, dynamic. Yeah, as well. Yeah. That's what I can present to you. It's, uh, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. But then, of course, yeah, if you have the opportunity to not kind of uh, check your internal world with the outside world. Uh, then I can really imagine that access is just a kind of a nuanced, becomes a nuanced thing because you kind of lose these checks and balances with the rest of the greater environment of society. Right. And then of course it becomes a very nuanced, or you can rationalize everything you do into... Well, if you live here long enough, you, you kind of understand what you're saying. certain things and until someone says something, sometimes people don't realize it all too far. So they don't want to realize it. from a psychological standpoint. And maybe also from a kind of a toughness. 
the few basic against the standards in one country versus another yeah. is seen as different. Yeah, so that's the thing, that's the main thing that one you know, talked about, the, the whole idea of access was a new presentation. It's also kind of, we always use access, the idea of access the normal, in comparison. Right? So it's compared to Nederland, or Holland, for example. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and then we use that as kind of some sort of moral grounds as well, and then all of a sudden things are strange or whatever. But, what, what, what are we actually, what I'm trying to say is kind of like there's got to be a different way, it's kind of something a little bit more deeper that we can look at to kind of make mm -hmm. comparisons yeah. so yeah. But have you, through your research, found like alternative ways of different angles of accessing access? <laughs> well, I mean, you say, okay, it, it is access is always a comparison thing. And somehow, I mean, since you've been researching it so long, I think. In this, it's also an effort to kind of escape the comparison mode of dealing with access. So can you find like another kind of way of thinking about access besides the comparison? Yes, yeah, so it's kind of, it's also kind of what I was doing with a vernacular, a vernacular modernity. Right? This is kind of, when it, you want to sort of create some sort of cannibalistic term that kind of eats itself up at a certain point. So that's also why access has nuance. It's actually kind of contradictory um, because at a certain point, I, I kind of want to destroy the idea of access. There is never too much. But why would you, why would you want to do that? Just personal ideology. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, yeah. can, can you come back to the idea of the three incidents you mentioned and the relationship with access? You said um, bubble, COVID, and um, uh, okay, so, terrorist attack. What are the so, so the two terrorist attacks are um, happened during the the post bubble period. So post bubble is not necessarily, yeah, post bubble actually is the, the bubble bursting is the moment to create access, but, but, or at least the yeah, lowest step, you know, the laying bare of that. But, um, no, th those are just, uh, those two were, weren't necessarily, th those are connected to access, but as timestamps, as markers, where I saw that I wanted to say that right from here, there was, there's a change in terms of kind of an idea. You are saying that the economic conditions affected maybe excess something? No, not necessarily. I'm just, this is just me saying, um, I want to start from here. Okay. Yeah, no, just sorry. technical. Yeah, just technical. Right? Sorry. This is less of a question than a comment, but I think you should look at it for the title. Yeah. Like you were a three volume series that Chris did share. Yeah, nice. Right. That may be a good source for you, because in the same way he's kind of, kind of I don't know. Deconstructing the idea of access and saying that it's inherent to all life. I mean, you know, the sun is the ultimate source of energy, yeah. but all life is, in a sense, an access. No, exactly. Um, what actually kind of a lot of that ideas on access is based on the pretty well line, but I don't think about that up in this because it's a bunch of people. No, it's, it seems that like you're more interested in norms, though. Yeah, uh, uh, which is a different kind of gap. For the here, right now, because it's supposed to be really how it works within the workshop, I think, is that we have to kind of not look for norms necessarily. Thinking about if you are, if you are, if you are somehow the, the, the actor of access, if you are the accessor of an animal, isn't that just searching for a frame of reference? Because uh, you're you're pushing for something, you're, you're trying to, you're stretching something out. Yeah, but I think that's so. You're looking for, you're trying to find base somewhere. Yeah. You lost some kind of. But I think that's also kind of going in excess on purpose. You know, that's, that's, that's pushing boundaries. I think for, for me, it's, that's also very Maybe because you don't feel them, the boundaries. So yeah, you, you're searching for one that is real to you. Yeah. So it's, maybe it's more like a, like a comes from a lack of real. Mm. Yeah, maybe it's also. It also comes from too much control. Mm. I was uh, I was uh, thinking about this uh, boat trip we did uh, today, and uh, at one point uh, one of us uh, was taking a picture uh, from the front side of the boat, and we were all uh, like shouting. Yeah, so all the Dutch people and all the, the, the still people were like, and there was this one 
uh, Japanese woman who were who was like ah she was also doing like this, <laughs> but then all of a sudden she realized that she was accessing uh, her gesture uh, as a Japanese woman, and everybody <laughs> looked at her, and then she was like. <laughs> um, but it was a real, like, a sociological uh, uh, event, actually. How mm -hmm. this access in, in to sort of Japanese culture is set, maybe for uh, maybe embarrassing uh, embarrassment, or um, I don't know what it was. But it but it's was exactly quite, the nuanced moment. Yeah, it was a nuanced because moment. We were there, but we were a minority. Yeah. Because we did something crazy, the norm shifted all of a sudden. Oh, and I can join this thing. Yes. And then again, the norm oh, shifted no, back. No, no I'm uh, part of a different group than that group. So it was a really funny moment. And I was thinking when I looked at you. How would she explain the situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 whose excess are we discussing here? No? Yeah. Is it your excess? Mm -hmm. Is it the excess of a group of people coming from a completely different place, starting to look around here and making up all these stories about, you know? I'm kind of confused here, and I, I wonder, you know, uh, what a Japanese would talk about, as they experience the success themselves. Is, is it something that is, uh, yeah. because, you is, know, is, he, is he now laying in bed and, and thinking about this moment? <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 is this phenomenon you described? Yes. It's, uh, it's like, psst, you're lying. No, that's it's your idea. Yeah, actually, the, the people are enforced to, to care in a modest manner, very much. And then, uh, but in the imagination and the affection from time to time, people try to catch up in a very excessive manner. You know, the third part of the dialectics so or polarity just like the same. I don't know the but I think the notion of access is very interesting to analyze this society. If we could go out of the trap of the stereotype or the cultural essentialism, yeah. so I'm really bit afraid to join in this discussion. I know that. <laughs> yeah, so, so this, so this woman, she, uh, she uh, really failed to join us. Yeah. She really felt to uh, enjoy the moment. It was a happy moment. And it was a happy moment. But then uh, she was... Uh, so and, and, and then, and then <laughs> and all her friends, they looked at her and then she was embarrassed. Or I thought she was like... I don't know. It was a funny moment. But you should join because else we're staying in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, should, you should stretch yourself in, in, in order to... To get somewhere else. Yeah. I'm actually going to um, close it off because we should have maybe five, ten minutes break really quick for us to set up. And then, um, yeah, five, ten minutes. Yeah, anyway, my presentation was also related to yeah, exactly. the social communication, so that's why I think it's. <laughs> <laughs>